Hello, my dear friends. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. And today we're going to be discussing EB1A visa, a green card for extraordinary people in the category of STEM. Very important topic for those of you who achieved some recognition in the STEM field. At the end of this video, you'll be able to learn how to get a free evaluation of your case, something that other attorneys call a consultation and want to charge you at $300. Let's go. Mr. President, Mr. Joe Biden openly said that the new policy for USCIS is to give a green light to STEM category. Why? Because the United States of America wants to bring the best, highly qualified, highly educated people in the States to build the country, to rebuild it, depending on your political view, you want to say it, uh, and bring the best to the States, right? To make a good addition. So who are those STEM people? The scientists, if you're a physicist, chemist, if you're involved in any kind of scientific research, if you have publication, if you have a PhD, if you work in a big company, then this is really good for you. Same for engineers, doctors, IT specialists, coders, programmers, everybody who is involved in this type of field. Also, people from education field and, and especially you people who are doing math. I'm not a big math person, guys, but my wife is an electrical engineer and she also has a magistrate in the cybersecurity and she's working for the largest corporations in the States. And sometimes I look at her screen, whatever she's doing there. I'm happy that you guys, including my wife, there are people like you who can do this work because I won't be able, you're great and you deserve green cards, especially those of you who can satisfy the criteria of EB1A visa. So let's discuss those. And I'm gonna be discussing only those criteria that I really think fit your professions, your specialties, disregard the, uh, uh, the count of the criteria and disregard if I miss some of them because they might be not as relevant. Number one, publications, your own articles. If you write books, if you co-author books or articles, you already satisfy one criteria and I know all of you already like okay I got this one Stanislav I got this one of course because you you bring the science here right you bring it on you make sure that the science uh, keeps progressing number two if you have publication that has a lot of citations how many is a lot well really hard to say but if you count in hundreds that's probably a lot if you count in thousands that's like super good. So if you have that one publication and you may co-author it and that has a lot of citation to it, if you have a dissertation, if you have PhD, if you got your PhD thesis or you may call it whatever, a very, very high intellectual writing in a higher level of academical education. If you have those, if you have patents, if you have some inventions or you contribute significantly in the science, in the education, in math, in uh, engineering, we can close the second criterion, which is a significant contribution in your field. Even if you speak at the conferences, and especially if it's a large international or large national conferences, you keep being invited to those conferences and you bring on the same topic, that in itself could be a contribution, right? So if you have one of those and it's significant for your industry, meaning that other people use it, it became a part of the industry, brings money to the industry, it saves money, to the industry, it does something in your particular field. And if you're a chemist, it doesn't mean that your invention just changed the whole uh, chemistry in the world. No, it could be in your specific niche, in your very narrow field of study, right? It may change it over there. Don't think that you have to do something really like insanely big. It could be uh, it could be big in your small niche, right? So this is important to understand. Number three, you working for company or institute or university or lab or some organization that has a high reputation. What's a high reputation? The longer the organization exists, this, the better. The more people know about it, the better. The more invention or something good coming out of this, this organization, the better. The more things, events they sponsor is the better. The more buzz about this company, and of course, 
course, if you work like in the Facebook or for Google in, in the Europe somewhere, that's the organization with a high reputation. But again, it could have a high reputation within the narrow field you are in, right? So maybe Uncle Ben doesn't know about it, Stanislav doesn't know about it, but the science people or engineers or IT people do know about this company within that field. Keep this in mind, and if you work for such organization and you play at least a critical role, meaning you're doing something which really affects the organization, brings them money, saves them money, scales them, bring the reputation to the company, then you already satisfy three criteria out of the 10. And I wanna remind you guys that the minimum criteria you have to satisfy in this type of visa is three, right? So if you already have these three, that's really good, but we don't stop here because the more criteria we satisfy, the better chances we have. Number four, a high salary. If you work in Europe or in Asia, in some developed countries, probably get paid more than other professionals in your field. If you have a high salary, and what's a high salary? Probably 20 to 30% is good. However, if you say Stanislav, I make 50% more or 100% more than everybody else, I give you a thumbs up, it's really, really good. Further, if you are asked to judge the work of other professionals in your field or in similar field, the classic way is a, some kind of event, some kind of competition, and you're chosen to pick the best works from other professionals. However, if you ask to critical review of a publication, of a dissertation, or other academic work, we can already count that as a, as a jury or as um, reviewing the work of others, right? So there are alternative ways how to get it. If you were called as an opponent to the dissertation of another scientist, another engineer, another IT person. Let's go further. If major press writes about you, about your inventions, about your prizes, about your successes, or professional press writes about you, we can close in the fifth criterion. Further, if you're a member of a professional association that accepts only professionals for high achievements, for outstanding achievements, and those who pick the new members are also experts on a national level, and those organizations exist in Europe, in Asia, in South America, everywhere in the world, I know for sure. Further, prizes and awards. If you get a national award or a private award, but which is famous and prestigious, we can count as a seventh criterion for you. Also, alternatively, if you speak at the big conference and your article or your topic was recognized or better was published in a journal or a magazine for this uh, particular conference or uh, event, that could also be prize for the purpose of a visa of talent. And of course, there are other things that could be deemed as an achievement or recognition on a national or international level. And of course, they could count toward your extraordinary ability. If you think that you satisfy at least three criteria out of those that I mentioned, there are very good chances you'll get EB1A visa, and that means a green card for you and your whole family, your spouse and your children under 21 years old. If you wanna get a free evaluation of your case from me within 48 hours, please go down below this video and fill out the questionnaire in detail that I prepared for you so I could give you the best assessment that I can. And then I will invite you to the immigration planning, the meeting between you and me, where I will build the strategy of filing your case and getting a green card to the United States of America. Please smash the like button if you like this content. And remember that STEM people are needed the most in the US at this point of uh, our civilization of USCIS dynamics. So please don't miss this opportunity. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss two videos that I release every week. And this is the best content on YouTube. And I am Stanislav Shamayev, the lawyer of the future. Your future begins here. Good luck.